My name is Thomas Matthew Crooks. I hate Republic. Hello again, party people, and welcome back. President Trump isn't the only one who loves charts. My third quarter channel earnings are in party people, and they're not looking too good. Things have to improve, or Chapter 11 could be in the channel's future. Anyway, in this video I'm going to revisit the possibility of two people being on the building roof. A viewer named Woody strongly believes this. Another viewer named Sam showed me something interesting too. So let's have a look at that right now. The shooter is seen running across the roof in eight tiny seconds. We're told he ran across several building roofs before we finally see him reach this location. Now look at this. Is this a second person moving around on the roof? Here I have zoomed in a bit, and something is certainly moving around. Here is where Woody points out that a possible second person is on the roof, because the shooter is still at the far right of this area when this thing is seen. Is this just a pixel, or is it a second person on the roof? You decide, party people. Now I have previously shown you that I think the person on the roof hurt his leg when he jumped from one roof to the next. He was running down the sloped roof and jumped the six-foot roof gap between buildings and landed on the roof that was sloping upward. The roof he was running on did not have metal ribs, but the roof he landed on did have the metal ribs, and I think he might have landed on one of the ribs and twisted his ankle. I think this may be why it took him so long to get moving again. I think you can see that he is limping when he finally gets going again. Now, he just allegedly ran across several roofs in 8 seconds, but once he reaches the shooting roof, he struggles to crawl up the slope. He is right-handed so his right leg is his dominant leg, yet we see him using his non-dominant left leg to push himself forward. After two pushes, he has an advance forward even one foot. Why was he able to cover so much ground in eight tiny seconds, and now he can't manage to crawl more than a foot forward in 39 long seconds? And I believe it's because he hurt his leg when he jumped onto this roof. When the cop drops down off the roof, he tells another cop that the shooter is beside a book bag. The shooter has to be on the edge of the roof at this time for two reasons. One, the cops said the shooter had a book bag beside him, and when the cops finally get on the roof, the book bag is on the edge of the roof. Secondly, after the cop drops down from the roof and walks around the building, the audience video proves the shooter was still on the edge of the roof. Therefore, the shooter was on the edge of the roof when the cop was boosted up to the roof and he's still on the edge of the roof for over 50 more seconds and until the audience video ends. So why is he only on the edge of the roof for all this time when the cop who was boosted up onto the roof said he already had the rifle out over 50 seconds earlier? Trump's speeches are scripted, and here we see the guy pick up the binder that contained Trump's speech. Trump pretty much repeats the same speech at each rally. Trump ad-libs when he goes off script, but they knew what he was going to say at the rally. And Slick rushes forward before the first shot is even fired. Slick knew what part of Trump's speech would include the shots being fired, and that has to be why he rushed forward when he did. So since the shooting obviously seems like a pre-planned inside job, it would make sense that a second person was possibly on the roof if the shooter hurt his leg and couldn't get to the roof peak in time for when Trump got to a certain part of his speech when the shots were going to be fired. It's just not believable that Greg would leave his post to go look for the shooter on the ground when there were so many other cops on the ground that could have looked for him instead. So was Greg the second person on the roof? You decide, party people. Now, the following is something that I, 
and a viewer of mine named Woody stumbled upon. Woody was showing me something in a video clip, and I spotted something else. Then Woody spotted even more. And here it is. Woody was showing me this flash of light. I then spotted a drone flying by. Watch carefully as it flies from right to left. Look above the building roof then between the two poles. Woody then spotted all these other light flashes. So it appears that a drone was launched from the ground behind the garage. Please hit the like button party people and subscribe if you aren't already a subscriber. And Woody believed two drones were launched, and here is the second one. Now here is the whole scene on video from the cop's dash camera. There's no I in the word team, but this was good teamwork. Good eye, Woody. Now in Sunday's video, I wondered if Dr. Wire Liar was holding a drone controller while he was standing in the crowd. I said it appeared that he was wearing a drone t-shirt logo of some sort. So was Dr. Wire Liar flying one of the drones that we just saw? It's possible, but now I no longer wonder if he is holding a drone controller because I think it's a baseball hat worn backwards on a guy that is knelt down beside the doctor. Now it's a lot of work making these videos, and I appreciate everyone watching them, and I just want a viewer of mine named Tim to know that I didn't forget about you, and I will be making the video as soon as possible. I love getting video ideas party people, so keep the ideas coming, but please be patient, because as mentioned, it's a lot of work putting these worldwide award winning videos together. And while most other channels have already moved on from this case, I'm just warming up. So thanks for watching. Please smash the like button, share the video, and leave a bunch of comments, and I'll see all of you in my next worldwide award winning production.